So what should you look for? Number one, look at the purpose of the project. Is there something that this particular project is actually doing? Number two is just look at development activity. And since the entire crypto space is open source, it's easy also for you to be able to check code. Next one is this. I like to invest in projects where the founders are not anonymous. When they have their faces, their identities, who they really are, and it's actually disclosed. Hey guys, so in this video, I want to talk about how can you spot scams in decentralized finance. How you can avoid them, how can you prevent yourself from losing your money, and how can you tell people or warn them at least that what the project that they're getting into is a scam or not. For those who are new into crypto, decentralized finance is basically, it's a form of finance without any centralized source. So think about it. Everything that we're doing right now, from transacting with banks, brokerages, insurance companies, all are centralized, meaning you deposit your money in a centralized entity, you invest in a centralized entity. What DeFi is doing is it's disrupting the middle, that it's peer-to-peer. -peer. You are getting all of those financial transactions without a centralized layer, meaning you can borrow money without going to the bank anymore, meaning you can collateralize your crypto and lend it to people and be the bank and earn money off of it with you transacting with another person on the other side of the equation. The entire context of blockchain is it allows it to be permissionless and it allows it also relatively that you trust the chain, that you don't have to trust the other person in the party because everything is transparent in the chain. The group of people, intelligent people who created DeFi who created the mechanisms for it, I, I really believe that they had very, very good intentions in mind. But here's the thing, because it's so new, it's so early, that there are a lot of bad characters and bad actors involved. And there have been a lot of rug pulls, especially in the DeFi space. So I hope in this video, I give you value that you get to pinpoint and spot if that particular project is a scam or not and if it is something that you should actually invest in. So what should you look for? Number one, look at the purpose of the project. Is there something that this particular project is actually doing that's actually different, that's actually game-changing, that's actually changing the status quo? Because here's the thing about that. It's easier to build tokens that are on top of blockchains than building an entire blockchain system itself. Because it's easier to build a token in a blockchain, there are so many tokens that are just the same as the current ones that are out there. There's so many projects that are meme coin related, NFT related, that they almost look the same. And the same is true also in the entire DeFi space, that there's so many AMMs, there's so many lending platforms, there's so many dexes already if you look at it what's the value of the newer ones because if it looks completely the same as whatever we see right now then what's the value proposition if it looks the same i'm not saying not all projects that are the same as the incumbents are scams or rug pulls but it should already be at x towards the wrong direction or at least a red flag because how can this project gain traction if there's nothing special about it, if it's all the same from what's currently out there as well. So that's number one. You better make sure that you are investing into a project that's different, that's game-changing, that's revolutionizing or disrupting the current status quo. Number two is just look at development activity. And since the entire crypto space is open source, it's easy also for you to be able to check code. And here's the thing, not everyone will be experts at coding. Not everyone will will know how to read code. One thing that's interesting that you should actually look at also is how active are the developers in it that they're actually building. Because the proof is in the pudding. The proof is on what they're actually doing to continually build on that particular project. Because at the end of it all, if they sell the token, they make money, it's easy for them to run with the money already and not do anything. So look at the activity look at their plans, and look at their executions in line with their plans as well. That's what will make it relatively healthier if there's continuous development, 
and they're developing according to the timeline that they actually promised. For those who don't know, while I was still in corporate was I was in IT. Audits are a very, very big part of what we did in our IT consulting firm. That we were very meticulous to pass audits, that we had our own audits inside to make sure that when there's an external auditor, uh, we would actually pass. When a project is audited, you know that there's an external entity that's actually validating, looking at the code to check if it's actually good, if it's actually legit. And somehow, no, it would make us as investors relatively more secure. It doesn't mean that if there's an audit that it's totally safe, but audits cost a lot of money. There's a bigger chance that the project is more legitimate if they have a very, very established and popular auditing firm uh, looking at their code. Because scammers most likely won't spend money having their project audited. So a big red flag already if that particular token does not have any audits and a big plus for projects slash tokens that have audits already. But again, please do remember, it doesn't mean that it's audited, that you are totally safe. It's a good buffer because that means that they're spending money to secure or at least give investors peace of mind that their code, that their project is actually uh, more secure and they're actually spending money on it as well. Next one is this. I like to invest in projects where the founders are not anonymous, when they have their faces, their identities, who they really are, and it's actually disclosed. I've seen so many projects where all of the people behind it are anonymous. All of the people behind it are just avatars. It doesn't mean that the project is bad if they're anonymous, but there's a greater degree of security if you know who the people are in the project, you know their background, you can easily fact check them, you can easily uh, look who they are. It's easier for a person to run off to scam people if they're hiding under an avatar. It will be harder for people with their identities and their reputations on the line if it's seen by everyone. And please do note this, even in traditional finance, a lot of people who are well known and who have their reputations on the line, they have scammed people in the past. So how much more if you don't know the identity of the people that are there? For me, above and beyond all of the things that I've mentioned, when you're investing in something that's starting, especially in startups, you're not just investing in the dream, in the plan, in the roadmap, and the execution, you're investing in the people behind it. And if you don't trust the people behind it, or you don't even know the people behind it, why would you actually invest in something like that? Why would you put your hard-earned money into something that you don't even know who the people running it are. That's why your money might be actually safer in Bitcoin than putting it into a project that you don't know who's spearheading it and they could easily run off with your money as well. Next is a look at the tokenomics. A look at also um, how fairly distributed are the tokens and the coins because you don't want a person, a wallet, or a group of wallets own 40, 50, 60% of the allocation. And when that happens, what if the price go up, would go up and that entire allocation, 40, 50, 60% gets dumped on in the market and the price would go down, the founders are out with no development happening, then there's no chance for that particular token or coin to also recover. I like projects that have vesting schedules. It will be tougher for the early investors or the project team to actually uh, leave and take out their money because they really have to make sure that the project is doing well. They really have to make sure also that uh, whatever is going on inside the project that up until the time that they could actually sell that there's actual development because at the end of the day if it takes two years for the vesting schedule to be finished then they will have to work really really hard that there is actual value that's going on inside the company to somehow protect investors' money as well. A red flag that people could watch out for is if there's a pre-sale and majority of the buying already happened there because when the token is out, all of those who bought earlier and if they have a large chunk, a majority of the shares that were part of it, they could easily dump it and those that are buying at a high price will be left with nothing. The easiest way to combat this is if you didn't spend a ton of hours 
learning it, you don't have any conviction towards this or you've heard people or your friends just push you to buy it but you're not really comfortable towards it or it feels too good to be true, then the best thing you could ever do is stay away from it. Don't enter it. The biggest mistake of a lot of people is they get lured by a lot of large gains which is a possibility also in the cryptocurrency market but as what I always say, gains are only a byproduct of what you know. Gains are only a byproduct of what you've studied without taking the time to learn what it is, without doing your due diligence. That's where you could lose money. The reason and the heart and the goal of why I create videos like this on a regular basis is to inform people, to give people a shot to be able to think on their own, to inform them based on the data so that they come in, not blindly, they come in with an informed opinion that should they make a mistake, and which will happen, man, no one can play a perfect game when they invest. Mistakes will always happen, but should you make a mistake, it's something that you won't blame yourself, you won't blame other people, because at the end of the day, you decided based on the information that you had at hand. I really believe that this entire space is so early that there will be a lot still of rug pulls, there will still be a lot of things that still need to be fixed in this entire space. And that's why you need to combat yourself with the right information. Um, go through the list of what I talked about, the purpose of the project, the development of the entire project, what are the programmers, developers doing, the audits that are attached to it, the founders, because you're banking on the people behind the project. Better if they're not anonymous. The tokenomics and how the tokens are distributed. And ultimately, if there's no peace, then you don't have to go. You don't have to go into it because at the end of the day, these are investments and investments are supposed to add to you, not take from you. If it's something that's taking away from you, then it may not be worth it at all. If you want to know more about this and you want to be educated in all of this, whatever's happening in crypto, a very, very interesting site is Binance Academy. They have so much articles, so much how-tos, so much information that you can actually use if you're just starting your journey in investing so i'll put the link in the description below for binance academy read through them go through it learn and be educated because at the end of the day knowledge that's executed is power spend a larger amount of time learning to earn because your capacity to learn will help you earn later on. If you're interested in all of this and suddenly you want to invest in the cryptocurrency market space and you feel that it's for you, I'll put the link on how you can open a crypto account with Binance. They're the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Check them out. I use them. They're awesome. They're amazing. And I guess that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.